everyone. My interest was recently piqued while watching the Republican debates to do a little homework on the subject of Mitt Romney's financial firm, Bain Capital LLC. I wanted a little bit of background information on the kind of investments that such a firm might engage itself in, and on the dealings of Mitt Romney himself, the so-called business representative. The information I uncovered is, at least from my perspective, rather interesting, to say the least. This is what I discovered. Bain Capital LLC was founded in 1984 by Mitt Romney and his two business partners, the last names of which are Andrews III and Chris. Today it manages approximately $65 billion in assets, annually. Bain Capital's recent notable investments include, in, two, in the March of 2010, the acquisition of Styron, a division of the Dow Chemical Corporation that manufactures polystyrene and latex for $1.6 billion. In July of 2008, it joined Thomas H. Lee Partners to purchase Clear Channel Communications. His financial ownership of this corporation in particular, Clear Channel Communications, was of significant interest to me for the following reasons. Clear Channel, founded in 1972, presently conducts operations in 45 countries around the world. According to the official website, its influence, in the form of radio station broadcasts and billboard advertisements primarily, reaches over 154 million people regularly, more than 75% of the American adult population. The network operates more than 850 radio stations and receives over 110 million weekly listeners. Additionally, a subdivision of Clear Channel, Premier Radio Network, syndicates some 90 programs, the broadcasts of which reach over 190 million weekly listeners. Yet another subdivision of Clear Channel, the Katz Media Group, is the largest media representation firm in the United States. It manages approximately 5,000 broadcasting stations as well, stations whose programs reach roughly 190 million listeners on a weekly average. Clear Channel's advertising campaigns are not to be ignored either. The company operates nearly 1 million billboard displays across the 45 countries that are subjected to its output. Additionally, the group manages and owns many bicycle sharing systems in European cities, the popularity of which is widely acknowledged. Clear Channel itself, however, has not always been received so favorably, and for good reason. Following the attacks on September 11th, claims were made that Clear Channel Communications had published and distributed a list of 150 songs to be immediately banned from the airwaves due to the sensitive nature of the subject matter. These songs generally contain references to some aspect of the attacks or other, featuring words such as flying or attack in either their title, or featuring them prom prominently in the song's lyrics. It would be comforting to find that this was the sole example of the censorship of material by a media broadcasting giant as widely syndicated and influential as Clear Channel, and possessing a range of influence verging uncomfortably upon monopoly status, but unfortunately this is not the case. Following Janet Jackson's incident of indecent exposure at, a t at the 2004 Super Bowl, Clear Channel launched a campaign against the broadcasting of any potentially offensive subject matter, declaring that no material determined by the company as being indecent would be allowed to air. Consequently, Clear Channel dropped Howard Stern, among other programs belonging to the network, from nearly all of its radio stations in its attempt to tailor the subject matter of its airwaves. Clear Channel is also known to have rejected the display of pro-homosexual billboards proposed by St. Pete Pride, an LGBT advocacy group based in Florida. In fact, these tendencies toward outright censorship resulted in a lawsuit in 2004 when NIPP, a locally based booking firm from Colorado for musical acts, sued the company for banning NIPP's clients from its airwaves altogether in an effort to eliminate local competition. But perhaps the most obvious and widely acknowledged example of the communication network's outright willingness to censor those whose views to which it was opposed came in 2003, when it silenced the music of the Dixie Chicks from its airways after the act had criticized publicly President George W. Bush's foreign war policies during a live performance. Among other questionable activities, Clear Channel has additionally been discovered to regularly employ paid actors to call into radio stations, posing as objective callers on the matter in an effort to subtly shift the mentalities of its listeners among the general public. Listeners who, considering the tremendous number of stations belonging to the corporation, are naturally unable to avoid its transmissions. But Bain Capital, and consequently Mitt Romney's influence, doesn't stop there. In 2005, it attempted to acquire both the company Maytag, after teaming up with the Hire Group, China's largest manufacturer of appliances, in what could have resulted in a monopolistic takeover of the industry, and the National Hockey League. Thankfully, both deals never came to fruition. 
In November of 2003, it invested and made major contributions to the Warner Music Group, another media giant with a scope of influence that is impossible to ignore. And even more interestingly, in July of 2002, it acquired Burger King in a leveraged buyout that took place in partnership with TP TPG Capital and Goldman Sachs Capital Partners. Are these corporate ties not conflicts of interest? Are these companies, Dow, Goldman Sachs, Burger King, Clear Channel, Warner, which reflect major corporate powers in the industries of food, chemical engineering, banking, and mass media, the kind of influence that an American president ought to have? What sort of consequences to the American people could arise if the president is maintaining such personal level corporate influences in policymaking? Could a relationship between the president and as wide and powerful of a range of key business players in their industries be detrimental or at best merely influential to his future presidency? And I'd like to emphasize that all of this information is what can merely be confirmed. I've neglected until now to even allude to the recent controversy that the Romney campaign may have received $1 million in recent contribution from a company that mysteriously dissolved itself two weeks after making this enormous donation a nearly invisible benefactor whose address is curiously that of the New York City skyscraper that houses both the offices of Bain Capital LLC and Randy Levine, president of the New York Yan Yankees and a private lawyer, the fundraising efforts of whom have been a prime contribution factor to the Romney campaign. I think the answer to the question of whether these conflicts of interest are cause for concern is pretty clear, and I hope you do as well. The definition of fascism is the merger of corporate and state interests. And though we've witnessed this treasonous merger between government and industry interests time and time again throughout various presidencies, examples of which were most blatantly exhibited by the most recent presidencies in their cabinets, namely the administrations of both of the Bushes and of President Obama, this does not make the, such conflicts of interest acceptable or in our best interest to perpetuate. Please share this information with everyone who needs to know. We need to put a stop to the advancement of fascism in this country, lest organizations like Clear Channel and corporate sellouts like Mitt Romney find their way into the bed of the government and censor forever our ability to not only spread but to even obtain such important information. I hope you learned something from this video. I know that I did when I was researching it to me.